we're going to first of all remove the background by using the contextual taskbar. This will simply remove the background so we can focus purely on the product. Now, since I'm not going to use the side view, I'm going to remove this. This is completely up to you. If you want to use it, that's fine. It is optional and the same principles will apply to this side as well. Now, if you want to remove it, you can use the selection tool. You would get yourself a selection, press in G on your keyboard. You would fill this in with a black color and make sure that the mask is completely filled in with no gaps or outlines left over. We can press Ctrl or Command in D to deselect it and we can focus on the product. Now, at the moment, we also need to remove this circle bit right here. And there is multiple different tools that you can use, but the easiest one is the magic wand. All you need to do is left click once again, press G and then left click. And there we go. We have now removed this. And there is a simple little area as well, this little bit that we also need to fix. And for this one, I like to use the polygonal lasso tool. It just makes it so much easier. Go all the way around and then connect it back up. From here, you can use the bucket tool, fill this in once again, and there we go. We now have a cleaner selection. What we want to do is we want to use the shape tool and you want to left click and roughly get yourself a selection that is the same size as your shape or product in this case. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the shape and you want to convert to a smart object. This is a very important step because this will allow us to open this up by double left clicking and this will be where the product or the branding will be. Hide this layer and you want to apply your branding in this area right here. Ideally, if you can, it is better to have your branding expanded because this will give you a lot more freedom to be able to apply it onto here and it just makes it so much easier when you expand. It won't crop anything in your branding. So you just want to reposition this, double left click to apply, and then once you're happy with your cropping, you can close this down, make sure you click on yes, and this will save the changes onto this shape right here. Now that we've got ourselves the branding, we're going to press five on our keyboard to lower the opacity down to 50%. Press Control or Command and T. From here, we're going to right click and you want to go down to the warp option. What we're going to do is we're going to drag the corners in and we want to warp this onto the product. And then when you get to certain areas, for example, here, where you need to bring it in, you can also hold control or command, and this will give you an additional horizontal line. If you left click, you will be able to drag this in and warp it onto that section. Same goes for this upper half as well. And then we're going to apply one here as well. And if you have certain areas, for example, this bit right here, where you have a warp on the inside, you can hold control or command, and this will give you a vertical and a horizontal line. If you left click now, you can drag this further in and create that warped look. Same goes for this area as well. We can warp this a little bit in. And I would say it would look something like this. We're just going to drag this one slightly back and there we go. Once you've done, you want to make sure that you are happy with the warping because once you apply it, you cannot re-edit it. 
So once you're happy with it, you want to press done and there we go. We can now press zero on our keyboard, bring this back to 100%. And if you want to clip this onto your image or get rid of the edges, all you need to do is hold alt and then left click on here. And there we go. We now have the branding onto the product. Now, the next step from here is, of course, to correct the lighting. And we also need to blend this with the original product. We can do this by selecting the product itself, this image, press Control or Command and J, and you want to apply this one above your branding. This will cancel the bottom one. So you need to reclip this back onto the bottom area as well. With the top one, you want to get yourself two more copies of this one. And we're going to rename it with the first one being shadows, the next one being highlights, and the last one being top highlights. We're going to set the bottom one to multiply. You want to set the middle one to screen, and then the last one to linear dodge add. So once again, this will be multiply, screen, and then linear dodge add. We're going to focus on the shadows first. So you want to hide the first and second, and we can adjust the lighting by getting ourselves the adjustments and using the adjustments, we can get ourselves a levels. If you don't see your adjustments, you can bring them back by going to window and then enable adjustments right here. So you just want to get yourself the levels adjustment. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the shadows. We want to drag the middle one and correct the contrast and the lighting. So you just want to get yourself some of the darkness, but you don't want too much. Otherwise it becomes really dark and dull. So you will need to just adjust this a few times until you're happy with the results. Now, once you're happy, we can minimize this and we're going to select this layer and you want to lower the opacity down to something like, let's say 70 or 60%. You can go back into the levels and you can readjust this to your personal preference. So I would say somewhere around here, we still have the colors and we still have these shadows as well. We can then minimize this, move on to the highlights. You want to select this one and once again, go into the adjustments and get yourself the levels. Now for this one, we're going to do the opposite and we're going to drag the first one over to the right. And you want to focus purely on this highlight right here. As you can see, the really bright colors. This will give it that glossy look and what the product actually looks like. You can see we have some of the lighting right here. So we're just going to slightly adjust this one. We can then minimize this. And then the final one is the very top one, which is the top highlights. Now this one is extreme compared to the previous one. And once again, we're just going to apply the levels. And we're just going to slightly change this and we want to focus on this bright colors right here now once again for this one we're also going to lower the opacity if you press seven on your keyboard we can lower it down to 70 percent and same goes for this one as well for this one let's say 60 percent we can readjust this one and bring them back slightly. And we can also adjust the shadows as well. Now for this one, we're going to change it slightly. We can also go back onto the main image or the branding and lower the opacity of this one to somewhere around, let's say eight to seven. So you just want to keep on adjusting the settings until you're happy with the changes. We can make this one slightly darker.
And I would say anywhere between here looks decent. We can also adjust some of the highlights. And there we go, that is looking a lot better. Now, sometimes you may have this problem where the shadows are a little bit too harsh. And if it's covering up the logo, what you can do is you can go back onto your shadows layer. You can hold control, left click on the mask. And by using the brush tool, we can lower the opacity down to, let's say, 18. By selecting a black color, we can just slightly lighten this area up so we can still focus on the branding. You can also preview this by holding Alt and then left click on here, and this will show you what you've applied onto the mask right here. And that is looking really good. We can definitely be happy with this. And the great thing about this is that if you have any mistakes, for example, this area right here, you can always correct this by double left clicking on this one. We can fix this up by using the brush tool. We're just going to paint on this area right here. We can close this down, press yes. And there we go. This will apply the changes onto the product. Another great thing about this is that you can also change the brand in completely if you wanted, let's say, a different brand. So for example, if we wanted to change this to a drink brand, we can apply it onto here, close this down, press yes, and there we go. That will also apply the changes onto here. Now, of course, this one doesn't really make sense. And also the lighting is going to be completely different as this one is a lot brighter compared to the previous one.